Um, how is cattle chondroitin better than shark? Um, you know, some people say, um, I, I know that one is supposedly more or less pure, um, but what, what does that actually mean? Oh, I, that's a great question. I, I, you know, I don't get usually asked that, but uh, we had a look at that. Um, shark cartilage is chondroitin 6 sulfate. So the sulfate is at the sixth position. Summit is chondroitin 4 sulfate. The Japanese worship C6 because they think it's an aphrodisiac. And that's where they're, I don't want to get into that, but that's where they're, why they're running after sharks. And they capture the shark, they cut the shark fin off, and they make shark fin soup. But there is evidence in Japan now that the Japanese have less strokes because of increased use of C6 sulfate. And so we're looking at something very unique. This family of compounds has miraculous activities. We're only first touching on the surface. But six is from shark. And we researched that at UCLA when we developed C4S, and we found that C4S is more potent than C6S. Excellent. Excellent. And thank you, and thank you, and thank you very much for that one. Because, again, that, I don't think that is one that we've, we've heard you go in and talk about too often at times. I, I know you've mentioned at times the, the shellfish side of things, but we won't, we won't really get into that one. That's, that's a whole another, another rabbit hole to jump down at some other point. Um, one of the other ones that came through talks about how the studies and everything that you, you, you did and, and some of that initial testing that you did on the summit side was in the equine world. Um, what would be your opinion on how that would translate more into the human world with this new oral product Eternapure has, the, the pure C4S? Whatever you're seeing, remember, we're all mammals. The formula of life is the same. The conditions in horses and animals the same as in humans. So whatever you're saying in the horse, you can translate into the human. For example, uh, off the subject just for a little bit, I'm doing autism research and we're doing preclinical models. So drug research starts in the animal because you have to pick the right proof of concept, the right animal to show what effect it's going to have in the human. And that's the whole basis of drug development. And so what we're seeing in the horse is applicable definitely to the human. Is, is that maybe kind of similar along the lines to why, you know, the Summit product itself has had so much success with other mammals as well? I mean, we've had people with dogs. We've had people even try it on cats. Um, some, some, some of those folks that have been around have heard of, of uh, Summit Schnook, you know, Marilyn's cat that initially got her involved in everything and, and how she actually used some of the product on that. But I mean, uh, there's been so many more stories we've had too of cattle, uh, racing camels as well. I mean, it, it kind of just goes across the board because they're mammals. Is that is that correct? Well, I was in vet talk about racing camels. I was invited to Dubai uh, by the largest camel farm owned by Sheikh Mohammed. So they have endurance races there, and I I lectured them on chondroitin sulfate to the Sheikh himself and his vets. Uh, I've been there twice to Dubai. Uh, and I can tell you that it's very, they're very excited by country and selfie. You know, the next time you go, you can feel free to take me on a trip with you. I'll, I'll carry your bags for you. Okay, I, I don't, be a pleasure. I don't. <laughs> um, one of the questions we have coming through is um, what potential could there be for it being helpful with glaucoma and or cataracts? Ooh, good question. The highest level, I think, of chondroitin sulfate may be in the anterior chamber of the eye. This is research that came out of Allegheny Pharmaceuticals. I haven't kept up with that, but there's a direct correlation why it's placed into the anterior chamber of the eye. And think about it. I mean, logically, they're using it in intraocular lens implants. It's safe in the eye. And that's why when we produced chondroitin sulfate, we had the purest form. We had to remove methanol, ethanol, because Allergan insisted that that had to be the purest form of chondroitin sulfate in the world. And that's the product that I had that Dorian and I, we, we qualified and started using that. And we do look at the results in the joint that I showed you. That was the original product. And the, what's being produced today is identical. Um, so I, I, we haven't really done new studies on the eye in terms of seeing, 
But I would bet bottom dollar that you could probably see increased uh, ability on the eye chart uh, if you had increased dosing of chondroitin sulfate. We haven't done it, but I, I bet my bottom dollar on that. Okay. Um, man, we're starting to get a bunch in here too. <laughs> By the way, there's a few comments in there as well for you. Dr. Hausman is a delight. Um, one of the other ones, the man, the myth, the legend, Dr. Hausman is finally here. They're, they're, they're loving you. On, on the send those from... to my wife. Could you <laughs> <laughs> um, in, in terms of Summit and in that side, um, is there anything that it could um, have benefits in towards helping with lung issues, heaves, Things, things of that nature with horses. Yeah, we, we haven't done that. But if you think of what I presented in inflammation, uh, even if you take a look at COVID-19, and I'm not going to go on record because the FDA is going to come down on this, but the pneumonia in COVID-19 is an inflammatory reaction. It's called cytokine storm. And I happen to be working on Marvin, that. I, Marvin, don't worry. There's only 200 people on the call. No one will do <laughs> it. It's not, anyways, it's not like uh, we're recording it either. Put out there. <laughs> so um, no, maybe this is helpful. a very potent anti-inflammatory uh, agent. So it's going to have blue, broad ramifications. It's not just present in the joint. It's present throughout the body. Uh, I was reading an article because I knew I was – and someone had called me and asked me something about um, mm. neuroregeneration, the brain. Is chondroitin sulfate involved in that? And I found an interesting article recently, which I didn't know about, that to have neuroregeneration, when you have nerve injury, these people are starting to look at chondroitin sulfate in terms of neuroregeneration. It's there. And the enzymes associated with chondroitin sulfate are in the brain too, in the spinal cord fluid. Dr. Hausman, do you think that, and, and this may not be a fair question because you, you're not, you didn't design the, the lipid structure of the liposome, but do you think that chondroitin for sulfate itself can cross a blood brain barrier? It, I think chondroitin sulfate injectable would, in, would right. cross the blood brain barrier, but because it's such a small molecular weight, and I don't think you need an active transporter to bring it in. We'd have to study it. Right, We'd have to radio we, label it. But yeah, I, I, I don't know with the liposomes. I have to say that I haven't looked at it. You, you, I'm sure if you put the right liposome on it, it could, it could trans, you know, go through the blood brain barrier. And so if we use the liposome to get it into the bloodstream, which is essentially what we're doing. We get it into the small intestines, liposome attaches, shoots it into the portal vein, goes through the portal vein into the liver. Could you not correlate that with, with the injectable as far as you get? And I'm just, and I, I don't know the answer. I'm, I'm asking questions just like everybody else is on here scratching their head. But if we get it into the bloodstream by the liposome carrier, would it not then you think be able to get there? We could prove that if you wanted to. I'm, sure. you know, I'm dealing with Vanderbilt <laughs> University coming. now. It was uh, we could radio label. I have a, this, one of the top labs in the United States radio labeling uh, my autism drug for me. And we could theoretically, uh, very simply, radio label it and do a PET scan. But that's up to you. 